Hi folks, welcome to an amazing factory tour of Grobe. Grobe is a German machine tool builder. In fact, I believe they have the largest campus for building CNC machines in Europe. But today, we're only going about two and a half hours away up in northwestern Ohio. Grobe has a huge facility uh, in Ohio for their US market where they build both their universal line machines and their system machines. You'll hear those terms thrown out throughout the tour. Universal line are the machines that job shops and manufacturing companies like us would buy. They're really, really cool five axis CNC machines uh, that are absolutely some of the favorites to, to see and use and they certainly film well. Grobe also has a huge business in their systems line, which is where they build these absolutely amazing like turnkey full blown automation lines for big auto, for the household name car companies that would do everything from machining on car parts to manufacturing and assembly. You're gonna see all that throughout this tour. We start out with their apprenticeship program, which is absolutely amazing. The video is time stamped as well, so feel free to jump ahead. I wanna give a special shout out and thank you to Grove for letting us come film, especially given how complicated those things are in the era of COVID. Otherwise, folks, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thirty-three hundred pounds. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. That Good morning, folks. We are at Grobe, not in Mindelheim, Germany, but believe it or not, in Bluffton, Ohio. This kind of blows my mind because literally, I just woke up this morning and hopped over to Grobe. I am unbelievably excited. If you have not seen uh, some of the Grobe YouTube videos on the part demos that they do, they're absolutely tremendous um, coming out of the Universal Line machines. But today. We get to go a full behind the scenes factory tour of what they do here in Bluffton, uh, not only on the universal machines, which are kind of the machines that you and I can use, but also the custom system solutions that they do. Uh, and with us is our host. Hi, I'm Derek Schrader, application supervisor for our universal machines. And you are from? From Glendorf, Ohio, about a half hour from here, <laughs> middle of nowhere. <laughs> this is still such a mind trip because it's, it's you can see all of the European influence or the German yeah. influence of like the, the internship program, the uniforms, the culture, just having been here for only half an hour. Yeah. And we're in Ohio. Yeah, yep, it's a great place. We're really modeled uh, similar to our uh, mother plant in Mindelheim, Germany. So uh, what you see here is basically 10 times uh, smaller than what you'll see in Germany, but okay. we really build the same product line. Uh, it's all done here in a similar fashion. So awesome. Really, we'll start in our apprenticeship area because that's where uh, we kind of fuel the company that started in 1990 when the, the business here started. Okay. So uh, it's been placed at the beginning was uh, six employees or six uh, apprentices. It's a yearly program. Um, we actually had our, our biggest class two years ago with 40 apprentices in one wow. year. Wow. So apprentices make up about 30% of our overall workforce in Wow. Yep. So those are folks that are that come out of the local high school programs and then come here full time for a mix yeah. of school and yeah, training. They're, they're, they're mainly out of uh, high schools um, or trade schools and yep. they're mostly local. Um, and right now we really we split the program in two. When, when I had gone through it, it was only mechanical based. So those might end up in the machine shop or out in assembly, fabrication, and so on. But really identified, we had a big gap with our, um, uh, on the software side, oh, debug, sure. electrical engineering. So we split it between mechanical and electrical. Yeah. And that's really when we, we started to grow that, is to help fill that. Um, and it's been successful for us. Cool. So today there's not many apprentices uh, working today. Most of them are in class. We actually have a, oh, okay. uh, another class in a different building. In person, uh, schooling is not happening because of COVID right now. So actually, we bring the instructors here, okay. uh, and we keep the program going uh, even during the COVID time. Okay. So got it. But you'll see here as we start. Actually, over there they got a vise. They start with a hacksaw. Yeah. Um, the the Decal de 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 FP1 looks like. Yep. Or FP3. Okay. And then they'll go to a drill press, a manual mill, manual lathe. There's a four axis CNC in the back. There's a five axis CNC okay. that they'll end up running. And they end up in every department in the company in the four years. Four, okay. So at least they don't they don't become experts in any one part of it, but they know in the end why they're doing what they're doing. Um, and really we, we have to start with the basics because um, you really don't know where they're gonna go in the company, where, where we need them. So we, we really train them all the same and then wherever they excel, 
and based on what our needs are is how they get placed in the end. And they generally will stay within the company after that opportunity? Oh yeah, there, okay. there's not much turnover. There really is yeah. a, a, a good company, private, good benefits. Yeah. Uh, we really, uh, they, we get to play with the brand new toys all the time, right? <laughs> yeah, so the latest awesome. and greatest, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, how old do you have to be? Can I? Oh, it's really cool. <laughs> So in this area, it's mainly just doing projects. So they'll make the part, whatever it is, and then yeah. they'll get graded on it, and they, they understand what they did or didn't do right. And even as one example, they'll they'll take a, a, a z-axis rail for a gantry, okay, and they'll actually put defects in it. Oh, well, you know, they'll bang up the surface or uh, whatever. And they, you know, you teach how to use a file, how to use a hone. Uh, how to mount rails, how to in make sure they're straight. Mm -hmm. And at the end, they have to fill out a, a piece of paperwork. What did they find wrong with it? What were all these results? I like that. So really the basics, because unless someone teaches you that, right. you may not do it right. So right. And the teachers on the, not on the academic side, but on the machine side, are they Grove employees that also work in the factory? So or are we, they have, dedicated? We, have, we have three instructors. Okay. The actual class work is done by a, a college professor. Yeah. Got it. Just another example. Um, this is actually a training project. Everything gets removed out of the yeah, inside. Awesome. They rewire it completely, and this is a project. So really hands-on. That's cool. Applicable to uh, what we do here. So, is this an older universal machine? No, this would have been a systems machine, but it would have been. We also do retools. So a uh, customer may run a machine for ten years. Now they want a new process. Oh. We'll bring it back, and actually, you'll see some out there. No kidding. Or we'll uh, evaluate what needs to be replaced or upgraded. That's cool. And this is just one that we were able to, to, to steal. Yeah, yeah, awesome. <laughs> so this is Mark Reed. So Mark, is that actually one of the instructors for okay. the apprenticeship? This is John. John, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> awesome facility. Yeah. Sounds like a really cool program. Yep. Definitely been a blessing for my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Mark actually went through the apprenticeship, started what year? 1992. 92. So. Okay. Wow. One of the almost original. Yep. Was the first class. <laughs> wow. And you now run it. Yep. Yep. So you, you spent a lot of time out in assembly, building machines, installing machines. Actually, when I started, went out to assembly first. Mark was one that uh, helped me in that journey as well. I mean, I worked with him for several years. So. Yeah. It was a lot smaller company back then. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. So. Yeah. So this is where the first and second year apprentices and the electrical side will be. Mainly I interact with the first year kids. The second ones start to go out onto the floor and okay. experience some of the rotations out there. We have a multitude of projects up there they get to play with. We're teaching them skills in soldering, wire sizing, wire routing techniques. Get a little bit into PLCs as well. A lot of our machine platforms are on the Step 7 300 basis. Uh, we also work with Allen Bradley controllers. Projects like this, where we have uh, somewhat of an automation simulation. So you're simulating a part being moved through processes. You have motors with encoders, lots of small proximity sensors they have to pay attention to. This is all off the That's Siemens awesome. platform. Yeah. So they'll have a full HMI. They're able to you know, map out inputs to that as well. And then we kind of keep all the hardware up underneath of this one. We have some other tests. A lot of them are rooted in uh, the German IHK test. It's kind of like the German Chamber of Commerce. So they certify their apprentices on different levels that they can attain. So something like this, you'll see at many different German companies or companies trying to get to this standard. Uh, the mechanical kids machine the components and then they have to put it together, figure out the pneumatic drawings and electrical drawings and come up with a complete system. So these are kind of in transition state where they're being built up. Got Owen here, he's working on a cabinet. He's doing what we'd call an I.O. check, getting all the wires routed correctly. They're working off of an industrial diagram, similar to any machine we're build. This little bike over here was a group project that some of my students made last year. This motor here was completely designed in-house. We kind of went off some plans we saw online, yeah. but took our own direction with it. So my electrical kids, they wound the stator for it. And this oh, is really? called an axial flux motor. So all the windings are entrapped in this Lexan here. The uh, mechanical kids use the four axis CNC downstairs to machine all the pockets and then the magnets sit within these two outer rotors. It's not the greatest e-bike yet, but <laughs> it, it lacks a little bit of low end torque, but. Look at that. That's awesome. Any advice for kids that are, you may be watching this and just not sure what to do in life or think about career opportunities? 
I mean, I think an apprenticeship is a great opportunity for a lot of kids out there, especially if you have a mindset where you like to learn with your hands and interact with uh, your work. Um, this will give you a lot of advantages over your peers and not having the debt that yeah. a lot of people need to uh, get a job. Explore it, you know, get out there and job shadow and see if you like it before you commit to it. Yeah, so. awesome, thank you. So he heading back out into our machine shop, uh, you'll see here, we're using Grove machines uh, where we can. Yep. Uh, we'll see some others, but there are quite a few Grove machines making Grove machines here, awesome. so it's pretty awesome. Holy cow, so this is our QC size. lab, so all parts get checked uh, here for our own use. So here we have some uh, fixtures. Uh, we measure customer parts here, so everything gets done. So not only our use, but uh, customers get benefit sure. out of having this uh, equipment here also. First, we have a, a grinder here. So these are all mainly rotary table parts. So uh, this would be the outside of a torque motor for an A-axis on a 350. Okay. Some of the upper parts on the B-axis tables are here. You guys build the torque motors entirely from scratch, or are you the, the torque installed? motors we buy, okay. uh, but we do all, everything else around it. Yep. And are most of the universal machines using torque motors? So on the on the B axis, all okay. universal machines. We have an Axis series machine, which came out two years ago, which has a gear drive on the A. Mm -hmm. But our Gen two uh, series is uh, it's all torque motors, A and B. Yep. So you can see kind of the colors on that. That's actually a used table. So this comes out of a machine which is getting retooled. We take it out. Uh, you know, we'll inspect parts. If something yep. needs trued up, uh, readjusted, we'll put it back on the machine. Yeah. Uh, that way in the end, it could be a 10, 15 year old machine, but it's like brand new. Yeah. You can't build that service up though. You just have to go right. down yep. and do yep. Yep. Well, A lot of the rotary tables are built in such a way where we can Removing material, we have ways to, to take up that gap and we can reuse these parts. And this grinder, does it have a B axis or is it fixed? Oh, that's amazing. See the probe arm? Yeah, yeah, right? Where's the dresser? Okay, so it moves over and dresses. Oh, that's amazing. Holy cow. So right now we got some smaller parts on it, but we have some uh, on, and we'll see them out in assembly. We got some uh, older series machines where we actually, it's a panoli, so the Z-axis actually moves with the spindle out. Okay. So we grind those on here. It's so the, the biggest service grinder I've ever seen. This is crazy. <laughs> Holy cow. The size of that wheel. What is it that's plumbed in around the table? Do you know? It's air. Uh, so if you have a big, heavy part on there, oh. a section of the coolant. We'll hold the door down so okay. you can turn the air on. Like an air hockey table? Yep. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> it's a nice, you know, it's That's really smart. Nice so now we have a row of universal machines, so 350s and 550s. These are customer machines or these are yours? This is all our own production. Okay. We, we're far away from assembly. Yet. Okay, no. okay. <laughs> Got it. So a lot of parts, these would be uh, for like assembly equipment, uh, general weldments system side that's really where Grove got its start um, I mean, we've been in business for over 90 years so uh, with the system side is mainly automobile driven so anytime you need a hundred hundreds of thousands of pieces per year engines cranks heads transmission cases uh, rear end drive all those types of components yeah and we uh, fully engineer a solution exactly for that so okay. there used to be a lot of transfer style machines uh -huh. Went to uh, pretty flexible CNC's about 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, so that's mainly what's making those part is CNC's. So that product line is very similar to our Universal. Okay. So built on the same, uh, similar base, similar cross slide, but different enclosure, different controls, different high pressure coolant. So just okay. more flexible for different markets. Got it. But you're going to build a, a machine or many machines that are only going to make 100,000 you know, crankcase housings or, or some, you know, dry pans or something. It's just going to be a five, still a five axis machine tool though, that's going to just do light machining on these sort, because I mean, they are cast parts, right, or forgings? Yeah, a lot of it is lighter duty machining uh, on uh, aluminum parts, uh -huh. but we get some uh, cast parts, which require uh, even heavier duty machining that, we can, that you can feasibly do in a machining center. We still build special purpose machines for that. Okay. For example, uh, crank bore, machines, um, 
uh, deck face okay. or cubing machines. Uh, items like that will still build special machines Got for. It. But in the same line, you will still have flexible machines. And you say line, you, these are literally like in a series, they'll pass parts between them and so forth. Yes, there'll be a cool. gantry or some type of robot which will move the parts from okay. operation or machine cool. to machine. Cool. This room makes it easier because you seem pretty small. <laughs> it's like not a small machine, right, you know? Yep. Yeah, it's a lot of fixturing parts, okay. um, not, not nothing too recognizable yet, which you'll see on the machine. But over here we get into, uh, this will be a 550 with our PSSR, so okay. a rotary pallet pool that can be connected to one machine. We have an external tool magazine next mm -hmm. to it as well. So this is a little older version machine, uh, but now we've moved the magazine to the opposite side, but okay. we still use it for our own use. Uh, so this will be a, so we got to assembly, you'll see this on our tool change arm. This is one of the rotary axis. Uh, it's used on our gantries. Cool. Some more table parts. Uh, these hold, uh, let's say, brackets for uh, ball screws and so on behind us here. So on like an X-axis, this will mount to the base. Uh -huh. A bearing will go in here and your servo goes on the outside and will drive the, the ball screw. So this, uh, on our PSSR, this really is a, a grow, full grow product. So we build the machine and the software. So one supplier for the machine, we feel customers really like that, has been really su successful oh, for that. us. So there's no platter except it's all built around that zero point system on. That's right. Yep. Right into the. Yep. Yeah, most machines we sell have some type of zero point for uh, easy exchange. It's funny you don't think of that as like a five axis. You're having these two large clunky parts. Yeah. Uh, but yes. But yeah, we can fit an actual full-size tombstone in a five-axis and do four-axis work. So you don't need the, a full uh, production requirement for a five-axis machine to justify it. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. And really, with automation, with our concept here, the view to the work area is awesome. That normally isn't a window, is it? Normally, it's not a yeah, window. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so right now, it's doing all the alignment off the casting. Do so you guys use Siemens more than Heidenheim? In the factory? Siemens is probably 80%, um, right. and then the others is, is between Fanuc and Heidenheim. What's this sort of standard tool uh, on the universal machines, a 350 or 550, what's your standard ACC capacity? So on board on a 350, we can get up to 117. Before external? Before okay. external. We can get close to 500 with an external. Okay. On a 550, it's uh, 140. Okay. And we, again, we get close to 500 with an external unit. HSK 63? HSK 53. Yep. On 550, we have HSK 100 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, that is basically cutting the number of tools in half. Yeah. So this is an older version machine. We don't make this one today anymore, but we call it our BZ 1600. It's a 1600 millimeter pallet, four axis horizontal. Oh yeah. Yep. And uh, so what you see up there, these are like bases for e-mobility uh, assembly equipment. For example, that'd be. Uh, a tool change support so that'll get stood up and it'll hold a magazine on it. We're pretty heavily into assembly and uh, the machining center at the moment, so uh, there's a lot of other equipment you won't necessarily recognize out on a machine. Got it. Looks like some castings, but also some weldments. Some weldments, yep. Okay. You can see it through this window here. You start to see some, uh, like a rotary table, yeah, magazine right. disc. So another four axis horizontal, so just like that one, but instead of 1600 millimeters, it's 800 millimeters. And you'll still make these on the system side or just, or nothing? Not we, we will uh, for customers who already have them and need more expansion, but Got it's it. not something that is in our regular machine offering. Okay. So another uh, four axis uh, horizontal. This is actually, I think, the oldest grow machine in the shop. It's a 1998. Okay. So still in use today. One next to it's a 19 by 99 machine. Still four axis. Yep. Okay. When did the Universal line first come out? 2007 it started. Okay. Yep. So now it's uh, roughly 20% of our business is Universal okay. machines. So some jig bores, yeah. mainly for fixturing work. Okay. That's cool. Still getting used every day, huh? Oh yeah, yep, awesome. every day. So NC programming office, so we do all our, all our own programming here. Mm -hmm. Tool crib behind it uh, for all of our own use. So next we have our, 
we call our GP 2050. This oh. is actually built for our own use. It's not uh, at the moment something we sell to uh, customers, but I think the next couple of years that's going to change. Okay. I hope. Uh, so main thing we're we're doing here, Z-axis slides. That's oh. a, a A-axis trunnion. That's off of a 350. It's actually it's a 350, but it's our dynamic table, so it's a smaller diameter. It's okay. faster. It's got. Uh, it's not as big, so you have more access. Uh, okay. for doing like na um, positive angles. Okay. Are, is there the turning option on all the universals? 350, 550, and 750. Yes. Okay. And we re re recently uh, released our G150. Yeah. Uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, saw that. No mill turn on that yet. This is the giant I mean, FMS system. Yeah. So yeah, you have a, oh, a, a robot which moves the uh, the pallet. It's a uh, battery powered. The setup stations are actually built the same like they are in the machine. So we can, like even down to the foundation, is, is the same depth as what we are in the machine. Oh, so okay. it means we can clamp parts up, we can indicate them in, outside, oh, they go in the machine and they, the machine can run. All right, that's awesome. Here's a strap clamp for you. <laughs> That'd be a Y-axis slide for a 350 size machine. Okay, so that's what we look, it's kind of what's facing you when you're- Yep, so it's stood up the and then your, your A-axis bolts in like this. Yeah. X axis, so then your Z axis goes here. Yep. Finish Z axis, and this would be a uh, 550 size table. So two setup stations here, and we have a, a storage area for other pallets okay. before we get to the machine. Cool. But at the foundation below here, I don't know, it's probably 15 feet deep. Yeah. It's unbelievable mm -hmm. how much concrete's in this machine. And actually, in Mindelheim, they have uh, four of these connected to the same load system. Here, we just have one machine. Here is actually the tool magazine, so it stores them in racks. Watch out for that. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at this stuff. Oh. In Germany, they actually have multiple tool magazines, and they're all fed by this gantry. So the gantry oh. takes out all this magazine, moves it over here to the oh. disc. Preloads it, or preloads it. Preloads it, yep. Look at that. Ed, Ed and I were joking, we were like, the thing that like convinced us that you guys are awesome was in the video when it shows the uh, HSK taper getting cleaned off. Yeah, right there. I, yeah. I know, I know, <laughs> I, I love it, it's amazing. Well, the chip detection is also just yeah. awesome. <laughs> we still haven't gotten to the machine. No. <laughs> Yeah, so we get a whole articulation of head so you can come in and say face off that side right there. That is awesome. And so, yep, you, so the head can go horizontal, vertical, and then you have a rotary here as well. Oh, you had it this in, is, this in, is, the, in the C. Call that a B or a C? C. C. Holy God. So here's where we do all the bases. We had actually purchased this from one of our customers uh -huh. uh, about 2011. Uh -huh. So it's an Ingersoll machine. We totally rebuilt it. That is amazing. Look at the drive dogs that are running through the, oh, uh, get them oriented. So the total retool of the software, the hardware, was all done in Bluffton. So it gets you uh, to understand the expertise we have in-house. So this happens in Germany, in Mindelheim, but it happens here. Yes. Yep. So prior to that, we were actually outsourcing the bases. Uh -huh. So we definitely wanted to stop that. Yeah. So we, we bought this machine, and now we do all our own base production here. And so if you if you end up with a, a universal machine in the States, is there a chance that it was made in Germany? Yes, there's a chance. Okay. So the good thing about our company is we really build the same products in all the different locations, so we can share capacity. Okay. Uh, but I would say right now it's probably 80% of uh, machine tools, universal that we sell right now, they're coming out of Bluffton. Yeah. Now, but we can do Bluffton do, machines that never have in Germany? Uh, it can happen. Um, okay. It's it's, it's, not part it's of the pretty plan. rare. Yeah. Just because if anyone has extra capacity, it's usually them because they're so, so cute. set up for it, right? Yeah. I want to say when we were there, it was the largest machine tool campus in Europe. Yep. It's incredible. It it's is. It's like 6,000 yeah. acres or something. <laughs> yeah, around 4,000 employees there, about 10 of these buildings on one campus. Oh, 
all that for a spot drill. <laughs> Bruce Spindle too, look at that. No guarding, that's hilarious. It's just so big. I know, matter. right? <laughs> oh, electronic control. Look at the control. Yeah, oh my god. It, it looks like a gym crane, but it's just the control. Yeah. These then go on that large black plate we saw out there. There's like, is there like a, uh, a metal foundation these go on also, a secondary? No. Oh, that large no, black base is so there. You get, there's fixators that are attached, okay. and it's right on the concrete. Oh, nice. So the big plates over there are actually for our PSSR. Those are uh, completely one unit. Okay. So machine's one unit, the PSSR is one unit, so we can put them together on site okay. uh, in a matter of a week, nice. up and running. So finished base here, same size. So we kind of follow the, the same direction as Mendelheim. So if they have a setup mm -hmm. for certain parts, we copy it, right? Yeah. So. That's why you would see some of the equipment we have here is to mimic what they do. Sure. So this is mainly for uh, gantry beam production, conveyor rail production. Got it. Oh, look at all the lights here. Yeah. So we've basically seen the whole machine shop now. Mm -hmm. We'll look at uh, this is actually our paint and powder coat area. So in a little bit, we'll actually go through the fabrication shop where we make all the enclosures. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's, so we have a the booth where all the, the powder goes on. Yeah. And then you have the ovens. Just goes through, that's awesome. So you do all the sheet metal fab? All of it. No kidding. Yep. Wow. Wet paint here, wash uh -huh. booth. Good. It's actually a base for the PSSR. So single Whoa. plate, everything's built on top of it. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise, the assembly of this takes a pretty long time if you have to do it directly on the concrete. So we oh, do it all in a single just drops base. in place and kind of. Yep. <laughs> Look at the chip in. Yeah. The self tippers. So now we enter the fabrication area. So uh, guarding is put together here. Weldments, enclosures are all made. Yep. Well, these are all weld booths. So if someone's Ooh, working in each yeah. one, Dust collection on each one. Yeah. They all have the, uh, the same, you don't see it here, but the same texturing on the table. Sure. Yeah. What, is, what is that part? Looks like a back frame on a machine. Oh, wow. So a bigger one, this would be a, a plate for e mobility lines. So everything, whole machine's built on top of it. Wow. So this would be an enclosure. Oh, yeah. Sure. Off of 550 pallet changes. Okay. I love the fixturing. Then we have two lasers. So one has the, the storage oh, of all the raw material. Yeah. It's automated, so this will run around the clock. Yeah. I'm mean, so seeing like a punch. It looks like it has the punching built into it as well. Maybe. Yeah, it does the punching okay, as so well. Yep. That's incredible. Yeah, some of the trumps, I don't know if this one does have a way of knowing where the drop pieces are and it can pick up the good pieces and then the drops go down like a pit chute oh, right. <laughs> automatically separates Ooh, I like that little one I know right <laughs> I'm not sure cute's the right word but man that is sweet think about how handy that'd be all your guys tooling It doesn't it's make easy, a, right? It doesn't make a bit of noise. <laughs> oh my god, this stop comes back in. One last piece of the fabrication process. A lot of uh, enclosures round on mm -hmm. our machine, so we have a rolling machine. Okay. Make a round Be door. Beautiful, yeah. So here now they'll start to sub assemble. There's the first step hanging from the crane uh -huh. on the side of a the machine. There it's ready to go out on the machine. So now we've we basically left the, the production area and our this middle portion here is all sub assembly. Like all the wire. Yeah, so we keep all that in stock. We come over with a, a drawing, we cut it to length, we'll terminate the ends. And once we build the wire, it all goes on carts and it's all project specific. Yep. 
So we'll do the same thing with all the, the fluid plates. So down over in that area, we actually, we build all this up with the, the pump, the tank, the valves. Yeah. Put all the hoses on, get labeled. Uh, we'll do as much as we can these smaller components so okay. in the final it goes much faster. Your coolant and fluid systems on the grove are internal? It's all internal, yeah. Oh, that's sweet. So it's single piece. Yeah. Pick. If, if, from a floor point, uh, or floor space point of view, the machine may look bigger on paper, but everything's inside already. You don't have to worry about yeah. adding all these items on the outside. Right. So this is the panel shop. So here they build all the panels. Yeah, so everything's engineered, drawn out on the back plane. They mount it, wired up. Every piece of wire has got a, a label on it. Mm -hmm. This is all for one this machine? This is all drive system, yep. Wow. Yeah. So you see how much is in there already? This isn't even done yet. Yeah, so. yeah. That's cool. More fluid assembly, so all the fittings we have stock of. We actually have a bending machine back there. Same thing, so this is the coolant tank, pumps, uh, lubrication tank uh -huh. and pump. So all one piece, Yeah. it's built inside the machine. So now we get to mechanical uh, sub-assembly. So putting together the cross slides, Z-axis, fixtures. When we talk about fixtures, they're almost always hydraulic, just so oh, we can yeah, it be automated. Nice. Holy cow. Yeah, so actually the build process, it'll come here, all the mechanical pieces are put on. It'll go back to uh, the CMM lab, they'll go on a CMM, they'll see if they have to grind any fit spacers, mm -hmm. come back, they'll pipe it up, they'll put it on a test stand, make sure nothing leaks, it works, before it ever goes inside a machine. Yeah, wow. So 550 cross slide Z axis on the table, this is actually from a used machine that we're retooling. But the new ones would get built in the same area as well. The size of the trucks. That's amazing. This is the Z, the Z base. So, right, the, so the, cross slide X axis. Yeah. Z axis. Yes. These always travel with the spindle. So you always yeah. have that same distance. It's a short distance, so yeah. constant rigidity. Got it. And we have three sets of bearings. Most machines out there have two sets on the Z axis, so. Got it. For several reasons, this is a really good setup. Are these rollers here only for spindle installation? Or do, they, do those serve a purpose during machining? Does it? That'd be for uh, assembly and disassembly. That's all they put. That's yep. cool. <laughs> yeah, and everything is uh, quick connect. So this whole pack here is released, and all your fluids come off as one. Okay. Same with your electrical harness. All of them are keyed, so they can't be connected oh. to the wrong one. So mm -hmm. everything's made to disassemble quickly. Yep. It's, uh... so actually, uh, this is a machine with a, what we call our accuracy package. So we actually have cooling strips under the Z-axis rails. X and Y, it's next to the rail, but this is how we take care of the Runs Z. It. So there's an active loop. Yep, right. of chilled fluid, yep. Yeah, similar to what you saw over there. So the part is in here, it's indexed into the station. The nut runners on there coming and oh. tightening the bolts. Got it. And so on. Interfaces with a, a, a V8. I was going to say, it's not a coincidence that there's eight cylinders there, right? Right. Oh, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> so cool. So you'll build equipment that doesn't necessarily have to do with chip removal. Right. Yeah. I mean, I know, it, the, I know the EV stuff as well, but even this, like, if you're Yeah, just so if we machine ahead, we'll assemble ahead. That's awesome. So it goes right together. Yeah, yeah. cool. God, it's huge. So here's the table you were waiting for. Ooh. This is it? 750. This yeah. is amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Torque motor here, torque motor on the A axis. Oh my God. That's incredible. What's, do you know the max part weight? Well, uh, 3,300 pounds. 3,300 pounds? Yes. <laughs> we actually have a demo out there with the steel. It's like oh 2,000 pounds. God. This is what you see in the work area, but yeah. everything, you have your slide, you have your brake assemble, assembly, you have your torque motor. So this is only half of yeah. what's in the machine. So now we have all these mechanical assemblies, all right? So now someone comes, we'll put the hose installation, the cables on mm -hmm. it. That way it's ready to get mounted directly in the machine with, uh, so that assembly happens very quick. Mm -hmm. And here you can see some finished cross slides. Yes, yeah, so there'll okay. be a 550 HSK 100. Yep. This hood retracts, and that's how the tool change happens. So this oh. is unique to us too. Okay is 
Just we can have the sure. max workpiece and the max length tool, and we don't, they don't interfere. Yeah, you're right. Got it. So this is just a chip hood. Yes, servo driven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now we can have a look at a systems machining line. So like I said before, the, the lar longer table is our 500F, so frame structure machine. Yeah, so actually this line, several machining centers, this one here, we did the first process on. The machine actually came from Germany. Okay. We did the process, we're building the rest of it here. Okay, so, we oh, share, so there's the line. That's the, the whole gantry. Oh, which that's moves amazing. Apart, yeah. So single spindle, very wide table for long parts. Oh, interesting. So this whole line is already going to a specific customer for a specific job? Yes. Okay. Yep. So this is geared around one, one part. There'll be a specific fixture which is mounted. Got it. And so this, and this is, can this be, is this, what you would see in the auto industry. Yep. Yeah, and this could be all the same operation. You're just having multiple oh machines or it can be progressive, right? It. it just depends uh, what needs to be done. Just when you go in those progress, progressive stages, you have to a lot of times turn the part so the automation gets yes. more difficult. Got it. But you're building the shuttle carrier system as well. Yes. Holy yeah. cow. So we're filming this in the middle of November. When might this be actually fun making parts in a, in a customer factory? Mm. It'll probably, something like this might leave here in two to three months. Yeah, okay, so four or five uh, months to get yeah. total. Yeah. It's a heck of a process. Yeah. But from start to finish, a, a project like this is usually 10 to 12 months okay. from uh, engineering start till uh, machines ready to leave. It's not bad at all. Wow. Okay, yeah, so the weldment is what holds this whole thing together then. Yep. Would you, you'll just have a torque motor on one side? This one you, would be just one side, yeah. yep. And actually on, on uh, just, most of the system machines, it's a gear drive. Yeah, yeah. You don't need the speed, right? Yeah. Yeah, packaging and piloting I'm, department for machines always interests me. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you kind of see the whole progression there. This thing, this one's just getting bolted together. Yeah, right. And that's cool. It's yeah, so like this block would have been what you've been machined up front on that yeah. 550. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good old countersink. Push it with <laughs> in, yeah. So an example of a system machine, single spindle, more typical, not the frame size machine. So uh, 550 size, you see the custom fixture inside. And something like this will get custom control too, like no QWERTY keypad. Yep. Interesting. That's what I mentioned before. A lot of the mechanical components are the same, but this isn't made to be running shop. different. Yeah. It's not a job shop, right? right so right. It, it's made to run the same parts for uh, life of the equipment. So this oh, would wow. be what I mentioned before, a, a special purpose machine where our gantry loads the part, the head oh. comes in and it may do some thread checking, some milling, whatever it might be. Something that's not feasible in a typical machining center. Yeah, yeah. We we'll build that equipment as well. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, it looks like uh, hones or. It's uh, probably uh, cam boring. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And this will be right next to a uh, CNC's, right? So the gantry was overboard, overhead, and it was ran off. Okay. Machining centers are next to it. Got it. And this is this is new or this is just retooled? This is new equipment, but was just ran off. Okay, got now it. Now it's gonna it's leaving okay. for the customer. Just the, the paint color threw me. Yeah, yes. it's uh, customer specific. Yeah, sure. So double spindle machines. Oh, that's so it. So two yes. parts at the same time. Right. The Z-axis are independent. Totally so, independent. Yes, totally oh, independent. No okay. Um, so let's say you have a, a uh, very tight tolerance mm -hmm. bore on one or the other. I can machine one, remove the Z, and then machine the other after I move the X or Y. Interesting. Okay, got it. Will you see interplay between the two, like tool, small tool pressure, if you're saying doing two operations? Like, I, I, these are so rigid, it might not even be a factor, but yeah, like it wouldn't between be something the two spindles, we, really consider, not even a concern. Yeah. Because you're, you're obviously, you're slaved on your A and your Cs are independent, but then your Zs can run it, totally independent. And actually, yeah. the, the x-axis, they all right drive together, but there's a ball screw between them, so we can adjust no. the pitch. No, really? So, so it, let's say this fixture, this fixture is off 10 microns. I yeah. can adjust for it. Oh, that's with, awesome. With the, uh, with that's that a very minor screw. amount. Yep. That's what I've seen on some of the dual spindle. I've also seen them in Europe before where they'll have two Zs, but there's like 10 thou of adjustment. That's it. So you got to have your tools mm -hmm. preset pretty close and then they can run, but these are two. Yeah, you can have two different tool lengths, it doesn't matter, okay. it'll, oh, so awesome. you command each one together. Yep. Oh, 
So, good example of an assembly piece of equipment. So first, the block is coming in. Now we're going to apply Loctite everywhere a, a cut plug goes. You are. The robot is. Well, the Grobe is. Grobe is, That's yes. awesome. <laughs> yes. No kidding. Yep, so it'll apply Loctite. There's a camera to make sure the Loctite physically made it yep, on. Yep, yep, yep. Then it'll transfer to the next station. Holy cow. So this is a turnkey where you're sourcing the robots and... Everything, yep. Oh, that's yep. awesome. So on this one, actually, the block comes down, it comes in, it's actually uh, lifted, hard is. And now um, the cut plugs are blown in from, oh, from the feeders. Okay. It's sitting in the escapement, and now you press it in. <laughs> so cool. And actually, what's really cool with this one is you can actually change, it's like a tool changer. Mm -hmm. So I can change escapements, and I can press different size cut plugs okay. with the same press. So you see that kind of like machine frame design, but it's just pressing, so it doesn't work. need to be that crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, this is a lot of stuff we saw in the machine shop was bases like this. Yeah. You actually have two projects you're looking at here. Okay. So this, this gantry overhead is moving uh, sub plates uh, that get attached to a part for machining for strength purposes, mm -hmm. to simulate a head or something like that. The block gets attached to whatever the part is okay. while, while it's machining. So it's getting mounted, and then in between there would be machining centers where we actually machine the, the component. Yeah. And at the end we take those adapters back off, oh. and then we transfer them back. Oh my God. But nothing that we're looking at here lives here. It's just here. No, you come back in three months, it's the whole totally place different. be different. It's amazing. <laughs> but back to this one. So same block, next uh, station. Oh, now, it's, it. now it's rotated. Yeah. And now we put the plugs in on the end. Everything's not plumbed up yet, so you don't have all the uh, part feeders attached, yeah. but it's same same idea. <laughs> My God. Is there a almost like a single Siemens control that will oversee this whole sort of the system? Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. So we have this block, so we need to attach the, the bearing caps. So all these need to be installed inside the block. Okay. So you have this, what we call an area gantry. So you have basically this, you got a oh, z-axis, flipping the part, yes. it's gonna go in. So x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. So uh, the tooling on the end can move the dunnage and can move the parts. Okay. For the vision system on oh. it, we can tell where it's at. So you have. Yep. For all parts going in, empty dunnage coming out. Got it. It's transferring all the bearing caps over to the press. Yep. Press presses them in, and it goes to the next station. That's amazing. So that's why they come in such sort of organized bins so the robot can do the pick. Yep. That's why you have the cross conveyor up front there. Once it's empty, it switches sides and it'll come out. And we can do this too with uh, pack in and pack out. For all parts in, finished parts okay. out if it's a machining line. You know, I'd heard people talk about Grobe making, you know, like four cylinder turbocharger in pellets mm -hmm. or something. But then you think, okay, so you machine a part in volume. Cool, but like, okay, this is totally yeah. so much more <laughs> involved. We view ourselves more as an engineering company than a machine tool Got company. It. So now we have to put the bolts in those bearing caps. So the bolts are in the feeder there. Yep. The robot will pick the bolts up. It actually goes to a, a unit over there where they, they put oil on the bolts. Okay. And then now the nut runners come in and tighten the bolts on the block. Make sure it's there. Oh, look at that. That's yeah, so what I mentioned before. It removes that adapter plate, mm -hmm. gets washed. Then it goes up, up the conveyor, down to the end. Oh, we're still in that same. That's yeah, <laughs> it's two oh, different projects yeah. in this area. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so now we have an example of an e-mobility line. Okay. It's only partially started, but at least I can explain a couple things. So what it means yeah. is uh, some type of electrification on cars, okay. but how do you make it, right? Everything in the past has been very manual. So if you want to make hundreds of thousands of these cars, you need an automated way to do it. Got it. So everything from winding motors to building the parts around? Yes. Okay. Yep. So this is actually a, what the customer wants a prototype uh, set up for. So it's easily changed over. 
Normally it would be fully automatic, but this is station by station, the parts get moved by hand. Okay. But still, some similar principles. So this system will take a, a wire, which is straight, mm -hmm. out of a spool, we'll make a hairpin out of it. Okay. So these hairpins will then get stacked on here. Now we need to get these hairpins inside the rotor. So this fixture goes inside there. Uh -huh. All these linkages get hooked up. So once the part is in, the slide will shuttle over and we have to widen all of the hairpins. Then it goes down and now it all gets twisted to what the state you see it here. Mm -hmm. So now I can show you an example of a leak test. So anything in drivetrain, um, mm -hmm. not only do you want it not leaking on your floor, but it can't leak internally. So porosity, bad machining. So we have to have a machine which finds those bad parts and then rejects them okay. to prevent a failure uh, on the actual car. So here's an example of one unit. So this is just a, a piece which fills the void inside the part. So yep. you don't have to put so much air into it to check it. Yep. Everything comes down, the sides come in, and we can test each channel separately depending on what oh, the customer that's needs. Oh, awesome. Independently, huh? Yes. Yep. Wow. So 750, just oh, about man. finished, and then one that's basically ready for the enclosure to be mounted. Just amazing. Yeah, this thing fully assembled is around 100,000 pounds. 100,000 pounds? So that's amazing, because <laughs> even when you tip so what do you you would call it uh a -axis. Being, oh, a, okay yep. you still your your truck is going to be all the way out there. yeah and the y-axis look where those ball screws out there they're very wide right like i said that bearing size to how far you get out from the center line it's almost a one-to-one -one ratio yeah they had a demo at emo i think that when the 750 debuted and they showed a, a, an insanely long tool and they had to actually articulate it through yep. that was so cool <laughs> Okay, so there's your coolant, coolant tank. tank. Yep. Got it. Just hugs up the side there. Yep. Coolant tank, paper band filter, okay. pumps. Built in. All built in. Yeah. Now chips go external. Yeah. So your chip conveyor, it's not in there yet, but uh, we can look. Okay. But it comes out the center. All the coolant, all the chip conveyor gets pumped on top of the paper, gets cleaned, okay. and then it can be ready for yeah. new use. So, so there will be a door here which swings with the pallet changer, and then this door here will give you access to the okay. table itself. The same so actually, the, the one we're going to look at next is yeah. without a pallet changer. So it does not have, have this out okay, front. Yep. Yeah, so 550. Uh, power on stage. They'll check all the geometry in mm -hmm. the stage. Once that's good, then they'll put the rest of the enclosure on it yeah. and finish the machine. So the 550 has the ATC up there. The 750 looks like it had it on the side. On the side, yep. And actually, the 550, the older version, like we saw in the machine shop, was that way, like the 750. Okay. The reason they did that is we could get more storage above on board and the machine got narrower. Yeah, sure, footprint. Most people can afford the height, right? There's actually some, uh, so it's a universal machine, but we're still doing a turnkey on it. Okay. The machines are running dry cycle. Oh my God, it's amazing. You're, you, I mean, your machines film better than any other machine. <laughs> it really is true. There we go. 
15 millimeter tool, 5 eighths or anything. Let's put it for 20 millimeter. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so 550 with a pallet changer, and then we also have a, our own linear system on it. Oh, wow. So we can connect up to five machines on one linear. Sweet. So this is our access series I mentioned before. So 350, main difference, single drive on the Y axis and gear on the A. Okay. But other than that, it's same. same as the Gen 2. So materials, Ink Canal 718. Okay. Oh, this we're making this part. Okay. Example of a flange type part mm -hmm. in aerospace. Cool. So we're using some ceramic cutters, so you'll see a little bit of fire. Oh, awesome. We also do, uh, we call the interpolation turning cycle, yeah. where we can use a lathe tool and a mill. So like this surface here, this diameter, yeah. that was all done with that cycle. So the uninterrupted cutting, it's it's interpolating a tool with a rotation. X and Y with the spindle rotation. Okay. Yep. Awesome. That's so we cool. can make a, a concentric surface finish. And with, uh, if we use a control cut and then uh, probe it, recut, we can get very tight tolerances cool. with this cycle. Pretty awesome. Can you drill? Uh, it's just complete the round inserts. Okay. Uh, three cool areas, it's got to be a little messy here. Crazy to cut Inconel without cooling. Yeah. Now we're going 5,000 RPM in there. <laughs> Does it tell you the surface footage? Uh, oh, look at that. A solid ceramic end mill, 12 millimeter. We're getting about 23 minutes of life out of that one. Wow. Is, that, <laughs> is that max? Yeah. Oh, That's man. Man. That is insane. It's like yeah. the guy who hands you the 3D printed end mill, yeah. and you don't believe it. Yeah. Holding it in a hydraulic, or is that a rebel? Hydraulic. Okay. It's effectively grinding, though. I mean, it's not hard on the machine or the ways. Normally, we would run the uh, tunnel flush, the coolant flush, along with it. Got it. Keep all that stuff moving out. Got it. But just to make it easier to see, we got it all. Okay. It was still cutting. Z length, X length, corner radius, and then in the NC program, it's just like you're at a lane. You program a length axis, diameter axis, and radius, whatever, corner. So it's not a tricky post process yeah, to right. make it happen. <laughs> Yeah, so with the hobbing right now, we're, we're synced at, what, 200 RPM? When we, when we do skiving, it's max usually. Same. Usually your, your limiting factor is how much RPM you can get out of the machine. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so normally you'd, you would have a, a tool in the spindle. Yeah, sure. It, it, it would do right. one or the other. But right now, with this uh, testing it does, it's checking all the different pockets one by one. So. 
so cool. We can have tools which stick out from the top all the way down to here. So we can have a over a 20 inch tool being tool things by an arm. So with our PSSR, the big thing that uh, we're pretty happy about is in the software, mm -hmm. we're able to uh, run it in a very flexible way, uh, like you are in a job shop where I'm making prototypes all day. I can run it like a smartphone. I can drag and drop. So I gotta put it in the right mode. So, that's more like the manual mm -hmm. solution. If we do staffed, it's gonna run off a, a schedule that you create for sure. your work orders. But if you have a, let's say a, you need a new tool for tool life, it's gonna stop and wait for an operator. We can also run it in a unstaffed mode where if you run out of tool life or a certain fault, it's gonna pull it out, bring the next job in and continue operation. Oh, that's cool. Yep. That's awesome. Door that's opens, that. you have complete access overhead for a crane. Yeah. Still great access to the work area. Yeah, this is a normal 550. Yep. And it just, it, it's just you literally kind of add on the PSSR automation. Yep, just an cool. additional on top. And with having a tool loading right over here. Yep. Loading or running of the machine right here and loading a part. So very nice oh, yeah. for an operator. Everything's yeah. right here where he needs it. Okay, so you're talking, this is where you can call tools up in the ATC or load new tools. Yeah, I can load tools here while the machine is running or uh, while it stopped, doesn't matter. This will bring tools to the magazine. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> and so that door opens, and then you just open the 550 door with the, on the control because it's automated. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And right there. It's cool. Comes with enclosure exhaust too. Yeah. So the mist collector, when you open the door, it runs at a faster speed. Oh, interesting. When it closes the door, it'll run at a slower speed, so it doesn't suck up coolant or chips. Yeah, sure. It's on a frequency drive. <laughs> that's awesome. Do you hear that, Ed? It's like built-in mist collector that runs on a variable VFD to detect how much it needs to pull. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, that's Same with the door. Notice when you open it, uh, it'll go slow and then faster. It's running on a VFD as well. Yep, and actually on a, on a 550T size, we can build this setup station just like it is the machine. Same clamping unit, same bearing. So we can indicate everything in exact at the setup station, exactly yeah. on the center line, so you're not having to do it inside the machine. Yeah. That block is going to turn into this. Yeah, so actually the, the part, the corners are outside the, the five axis dome. So that's where we just trim it now. That way, we were able to turn the tronium without hitting anything.
using barrel cutters? Yeah. All right, folks, last but not least, spindle room. Basically, the objective is to have every spindle type independent of the manufacturer that we're using in stock so that we can always provide an exchange spindle in advance if that's necessary. Yep. So that's our stock. Yep. We have uh, around about 140 spindles uh, in stock. Serious? Yeah. Different, that's different models, though, too? Multiple. Wow. Uh, quantities of the same type okay. and different models uh, yep. we keep also you know we use different brands of spindles mm -hmm. periodically in the machine depending on the application so mm -hmm. we also keep their spindles in our inventory as well yeah. to make sure we're completely protected yeah. um, so that's why such a high number of spindles and our our model is really just so that we can make sure that we're able to provide a spindle really at the time of need so it could be in advance yep customer has a situation where they go down, we immediately pull a spindle, ship it to them. They don't have to spend any downtime waiting yep. for a spindle and so on. So, that's so really, this is just not, this is not only universal line, but also the systems? It is, okay. it's, yeah, both, okay. exactly. Yep. That's why the, the in investment in uh, the spindle room itself. Yeah, I heard it used to be the cafeteria. Yeah, it was. <laughs> So there's basically six uh, assembly stations here within the room, mm -hmm. um, but behind the glass, uh, once the spindles are uh, built up and we're ready to test them, um, even actually the spindles that are in our stock every six months, they rotate into the stand, make sure that they're ready to go. Yeah, is, that an, is it an issue to have a spindle sit on an inventory rack for a year? Um, it can be. Okay. Um, actually, that's why we, we built pallets the way that we have, so we can clock them every, oh. on, a, on a regular basis. It's like a bottle basis. of fine wine. You just right. rotate every Especially year. the grease pack. Air yeah. oil, we have one of the air oil spindles Perfect. on our test stand. That's not obviously necessary, but the grease packs, it's an important part of storage. Got it. So. So for example, this is our mill turn spindle, type 28 mm -hmm. grobe spindle, uh, 15,000 RPM spindle. It's going through its six month check because yep. it's been on the inventory. Um, so it's es Wait, essentially- 10,000 RPMs right now, that's insane. Yeah, and it's as if it were in the machine. Yeah. Everything on all three of these test stands du duplicate what we conditions we would have in the machine even uh, simulated high pressure coolant if we need it and so on. So I mean, we're running air oil at the moment. Um, there's a couple of other uh, spindles on the test stands at the moment. That's a type one grove on the end, which is an 18,000 RPM grease pack spindle. Mm -hmm. so. so when you rebuild a spindle, you'll strip it down, new bearings, new grease, recondition surfaces if needed, preload, the, yeah. the whole process. Everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And does, do, do the people swap out spindles or will they rebuild their exact spindle itself? Uh, typically it's an ex exchange it's just exchange. because you don't have to wait for True. it. Yeah. But cool. I mean, we're able to obviously offer whatever. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a typical rebuild might take, if you were going to wait the three or four weeks. Oh, yeah. I think at least. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, power cabinets are upstairs. Uh, all of the chilling is upstairs just to basically have a nice um, test room. Mm -hmm. These actually, all three of these stands are prototype stands. They can virtually run any spindle we've ever had mm -hmm. in any one of our machines. Uh, they're, they're capable of running any horsepower, any RPM, any 
really any condition that we have on the machine. Yeah. You said simulated through spindle cool, high pressure coolant. Yeah, huh? we have a, it's basically a glorified spindle chiller that can run simulated high pressure coolant through the tool. So we have a rotary union on the mm -hmm. traditional like you'd have on the back. Virtually the same thing as on the tool, special tool holder that we have to, to run loops simulated. It, it does actually loop it through. Yep. So it's not yep. simulated, it's real. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. But right. it's, it's not coolant. Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. That's right. awesome. Yeah. So the process of replacing a spindle out requires just a cartridge, the cartridge swap and then a rebalancing and alignment? Uh, no rebalancing. You know, obviously, it's a full cartridge spindle, so um, it's actually quite simple in a grove. Essentially, we have a locating ring. The ideal is when it goes into the machine, it's really ready to run. We're up and running Seriously? in probably eight hours, I would say, roughly. It's amazing how much they fit into that. Yeah, so really, this is about what you get when you get a spindle. Um, everything is through quick disconnects. Mm -hmm. On the newer machines, there actually is a manifold plate, which makes it a little bit simpler. Okay. Um, but and all the spindles are cartridges that include the motor in line with them. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's full motorized right. spindles. Yeah. So if we're doing like a uh, a belt driven or your traditional boring spindles, some of the larger spindles that have low RPMs mm -hmm. that are not motorized. Okay. Uh, we're actually doing them in these rooms here. We have a test stand that's being recommissioned yep. as we moved it into this room. But it's capable of doing our large boring spindles for special purpose machines, multi-spindle tapping or boring heads, oh, basically okay. the whole, what you used to have traditionally on the transfer lines. We yeah. still do a lot of that because we still have those machines running in the field today. But yeah, we're, we're still doing all of those rebuilds here in Bluffton. Amazing. A big thank you to Grove for letting us come see behind the scenes how they make these machines. Again, they're probably some of the coolest machines to work and see how they machine parts and how just how they move. Really an amazing tour. As always, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.